Very good evening, ladies and gents. Very good evening. Uh, my timing's impeccable as I come on this webinar to show you some things that I think will be valuable to you. And we have obviously Jerome Powell uh, speaking, and the market is currently getting a little bit of a bid. Last time I saw, he was saying quite. I thought it was negative stuff. I didn't looking at it. You just, I mean, a market seems to be catching a bit of whatever at the moment. Um, trade what you see not what you think but um the last thing i thought saw come over on um the news wire was it's going to be a bumpy landing or something like that obviously the market likes it so the market is bid let's see if it holds that for the rest of the day i'm looking at nasdaq by the way that's that's the market i'm looking at, at the moment uh and see if that comes all back anyway you're not here for running a commentary on the market i'm sure ladies and gents you have one eye uh on your screen that's fine you're a trader i get it you understand you know that um very important to see what's going on and you may have positions and hopefully you're long and you're trying to extract as much as you possibly can from it or maybe you're waiting for a reversal who knows okay so let's get going uh today obviously please as per check out the disclaimer um risky business this can be very lucrative can be very risky uh it's uh if you don't understand the risk, then just double, double check it. I'm pretty sure everybody here knows that everybody's seen this disclaimer many times before, but I hate to think of someone getting involved with trading, thinking it's all easy and it's all fluffy clouds and unicorns and raining money. And of course, we know the difference. It's tough. Uh, there is risk, um, but there is good upside as well um, alongside that. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you uh, about five simple day trading drills uh, for improved performance i'll get into a minute why we're going to talk about that but i always like to put a, a stoic quote uh, on my on my headline slide if you like seneca difficulty comes from our lack of confidence which is quite interesting right because when i i kind of I, I google some of these quotes um and you know, i like reading the stoic books i've read meditations by marcus aurelius there's some great books by ryan holiday um, as well, if you want to check those out. But this kind of made me think a little bit. Difficulty comes from a lack of confidence. In what way is that true? And actually, it's true because you know if we feel confident about something, then it it it's not hard to do it. And, and in trading, if we have confidence, we don't fear a loss. We don't get too elated on a gain. We just trade, and we just believe that it'll work itself out uh, in the wash. Okay, so uh, as usual, guys. Uh, there's a Q&A section on your screen somewhere. If you want to add your questions, add your questions as we go, and I'll get to them at the end. Or if you want to hold them till the end, that's absolutely fine. I'll allow some time to answer some questions. And if I can help you, I absolutely will. If I can't, I'll probably go away, find out the answer for you, or direct you to someone who can who can give you the answer. Even though I've been trading 20 plus years, I still don't have all the answers. I still don't have all the answers. Okay, so topics for today. Why are we going to use drills? What's the point of them? Um, and then the rules, the, the actual rules to improve, uh, how you implement these drill, these drills. And we've got uh, the one simple rule drill, limit orders only drill, try to lose drill, which is wild, really pretty controversial. Uh, you'll see force trader drill, hedge, and the bonus one I've got for you is the, the coin toss drill. Um, and, and just uh, we're coming to this with an open mind. In a moment, I'll hopefully convince you why these are valuable, but just have an open mind with stuff. Um, and as always, uh, ladies and gents, information purpose only. Um, there's no strategies per se here. And this one, when I talk about strategies, always do your own uh, research, your own due diligence uh, and all that type of stuff. So uh, let's get going. So the first thing is, right, I don't recommend you do all of these. The, the reason we kind of, um, that we, we want to do drills, uh, let me go back one actually and move this slides over the place. Yeah. I don't recommend you do all of these, right? It's just to pick one or two and then maybe adjust them to suit you. And and again, some of these are they, they seem ridiculous. So I I you know I ask you, request you to come in with an open mind. Um and, and the point of this is is that we're trying to isolate one specific problem in your trading and fix it. You know, I've been trading for a long period of time. I you know, run the trades mastermind, so I get access to other traders. I do some one-to-one -one stuff with traders. I see this time and time and time again, is that as traders, we're constantly trying to make little mini adjustments as we go, and we end up just going round in circles. 
And sometimes you have to go, right, listen, I'm going to laser focus on this one specific challenge because I need to get over this challenge if I'm going to move forward. I can't move forward with my trading until I'm past this challenge. It doesn't matter how much money I'm making, how much I'm doing this and doing that. If I'm constantly making this error, I'm going to go back to square one. So it's focusing on that one thing and saying, I'm going to do what needs to be done. I don't care. I don't care about taking a step back. I don't care about wiping the slate clean. Actually, the podcast as well. Last week, talking exactly this type of thing, don't be afraid to wipe the slate clean. No matter how many years experience you've got, saying, hey, I'm going to start afresh. I'm going to completely rewire the way I think about things. and I'm going to build things up brick by brick by brick by brick with a solid foundation. This is what these drills are for. The objective here isn't to make great trades. The objective here isn't to boost your equity curve. The objective here is to work on skills that are going to help you boost your equity curve or hopefully help you boost your equity curve. Just like if you're playing football, right? You're playing football or you're a Premier League player. They don't constantly play matches. They are working on dribbling they're working on shots they're working on tackling they're working on set pieces they're working on the ball they're working on all these different things that are going to be useful for them in the match and if they recognize that there's a, a weakness at a certain aspect of their football in the match say hey i'm not very good at kind of beating a man one-to-one -one. i'm going to work on it work on it they go back and they work on that so they're ready for the match this is the same thing with trading right we are going to work on specific things so that when we're playing the match i.e in the market, actually trading and executing and allocating risk capital, we're more prepared. I think that, you know, trade as traders, we don't do this. We just play matches and matches and matches all the time. It'd be like a Premier League footballer just playing a match, 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 match and doing no training. Right? Yes, to a certain extent, but you only get, maybe you only get a few examples and a few things to practice. How many times you get to practice your one-on-one, -on -one, your shots in a match? Maybe you get a few shots in a match if you're a striker but you don't get to practice it. So this is what we're doing. We're taking a step back and we're just practicing, 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 practicing. And, you know, there are guys, um, this is a really popular thing for prop traders. I think prop trading has kind of dwindled quite a lot now. We've got the online prop world, but when you used to be able to go to a trading office and you could trade prop at an office, these were the sort of things, not these specifically, but drills were the sort of things that would be done in a way to improve your trading. You know, so, you know, thinking about things granularly, going right down to the kind of grassroots and saying, you need to do work on this. So you're going to do work on this. We're not going to focus on making money here. We're going to focus on doing this drill and completing this drill. So these aren't permanent. You know, I think one of the pushback that I often get and obviously the, the, the kind of dialogue you have internally is that's ridiculous. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be trading like this. It's not permanent. You know, just like you're not going to be passing doing one touch passes back and forth to your teammate on the training pitch not permanent it's doing something that might seem silly but it's to overcome something and i know i've highlighted this i know several traders who have done seemingly silly drills and many of those are here i've included many of these tonight to overcome specific challenges and it's worked it's worked for them so open mind i ask you to come and open mind and just look at them and, and see what you think okay so Let's go. So, so um, if I can get the right mouse button, that would help. Um, why use drills? So we, we're trying to focus on a specific challenge with our trading. I'm not going to repeat myself too much. I've, I've kind of covered this. It takes your, and, and the, this is the thing I didn't mention, which is so useful. It takes your attention away from PL and onto something different because we are all stuck focusing on PL and quite rightly to a certain extent that's the scorecard that's what matters it doesn't matter how good you are and your knowledge is at the end of the year it matters how much money you've made from the market right that's that's the scoreboard that's all we're concerned about and so our attention is on the score on the score on the score and it shouldn't be you know maybe a separate topic completely but we shouldn't be focused on that we should be focused on the process we should be focused on our standards our habits all that type of stuff and the PL should follow but if you struggle to do this and if you're constantly looking at your PL and constantly trying to um, become better by looking at your PL, focusing on a drill and having that as your line of sight, having that in your crosshairs rather than your equity curve. And if your equity curve is struggling as well, it can be demoralizing, right? You can feel frustrated. You can even feel disgusted that you've, you've done all these things. So this allows you to lift that burden off your shoulders 
and say, right, I'm working on these drills. I don't care about PL. Do not care. I'm focused on becoming better at this specific thing. I'm going to run it for 10 days, for five days, 30 days, whatever. And then I'm going to maybe go back into the market and use that new skill I've got to try to improve my trading and try to pick better trades and try to hold the winners, whatever it may be. And the idea is we're rewiring our brain to build habits you actually want. Because if you're constantly doing drills, 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 we know the neurons are getting wired, the electric current's going through, and you know I'm not a neuroscientist by the way I'm describing this, but you get the idea, right? It kind of little electric current goes through, look, and it just hardens that pathway. And that's what I, I read. I mean, I'm not a brain surgeon, but that's what I've read, and that's the kind of science behind it, generally speaking, is why we have habits, is the brain wants to be able to do something easily without thinking about it, it wants to save energy. And so we build habits which are automatic, and unfortunately, a lot of those are habits that we don't want. You know, habits in trading, closing a trade too soon, jumping the gun on a trade, taking a trade that's outside of our strategy. All these kind of things are almost hardwired. And so we're trying to rewire it to build the habits that we actually want and are going to be conducive to long-term success in the market. Okay, so I, I wanted, one thing I want to mention, guys, is um, in the, these should be done really on a demo account. Okay, I think for safety purposes, um, this is a very different way of approaching things and we're here to fix something. And so a demo is important. So drill one is the one simple trading rule drill. So the purpose of this is to combat overthinking. And this is a, this is a real world, real, a real word, by the way, perfect traditis. Many of you suffer from this perfect traditis. I know I have uh, in the past and no doubts it will creep in and will creep out throughout my next decade or two in my trading journey. We're human beings, right? We want everything to be spot on the money. We want it to be perfect, perfect trade itis. And what this does is it, many of us are overthinkers, right? And many of you are, you will get over it. You have to get over it to get to the next level. But overthinking, I need to have this every single duck lined up in a row. And I'm not going to do this until that level's there. And we've got a volume on this. And we've got a pullback on here. And so time of day is correct. And it's this and that, the other. And the stochastic's doing this. And the RSI is back here. The Bollinger Band is here. And the, it's like, it's never going to happen. And when it does happen, you still get stopped out. You're like, oh, everything was perfect. We don't want that. And so what you want to do is come up with one simple rule. Then think about how. Why it works is just a very, very simple rule. And again, I urge you to kind of think of this as if you were a beginner. Imagine yourself wiping the slate clean, having a foundation saying, I'm going to build the right habits from the ground up, however long it takes me. I'm not going to constantly try to be tweaking, adjusting things. I'm going to go for it. And I'm just going to build, build, build. So don't overthink it. That's part of the problem. It needs to be a very simple strategy. An idea this could be, and again, any, any, absolute anything. If the price tests the prior days high or low, I'll go long or short. It doesn't matter about the expectancy. It's just you executing on one idea. Super simple. So if the price goes up to the prior, if you're a day trader, price goes up to the prior days high, you go short. Price goes to the prior days low, you go long. And you have some rules. It's, it's, it's super simple to point, and it could be anything, right? The point is you're not trying to improve your equity curve here. You're trying to execute on a rule. If you break your rules, if you have a discipline issue, if you find yourself jumping the gun, if you find yourself not pulling the trigger, this is something that is going to be easy to follow. It's very simple. And going back to a couple of slides back, this takes the burden of profitable trading off your shoulders. And it sounds silly, like, well, I want to be profitable trade. Yeah, but we're, we're just pushing that down and working on the skill. If you can do this and say, hey, I don't care if it's going to be a winner or loser. All of my job is to execute. I'm doing this to improve my execution skills, to improve my ability to stick to the plan. That's it. The burden is lifted. You find that things change and you start to think about markets differently and you want to hardwire that ability to execute. And I, I, I hate to say like a robot, but that part of the trade is, is should be. Like I see the signal, I want to take the trade, bang, I execute it. I don't like, the reason I pause there slightly is I don't like, generally speaking, the whole adage of trading like a robot because I feel that as a discretionary trader, a lot of our edge comes from the human element. So we do have a systemized approach, filters, triggers, et cetera, but the the kind of the, the final little little flavor, the little, what's the dude who does the salt like this, salt bay, <laughs> and he sprinkles the salt, if you like, that's us. You know, that's the little bit. That, that gives us the, the opportunity. So one simple trading rule drill. The goal here is just to execute perfectly. 
set alerts, do what you need to do. Don't take any excuses why you didn't. This is the whole point, right? It's very, very simple. You do whatever you need to do to take the trade. Set your alerts, set your limits in, do whatever. Take 10 trades without question or hesitation. And just, again, we're building from the ground up, just proving you can stick to a very, very simple plan. Imagine this. Often I, I say this to traders, and I often think about this myself. Imagine you were someone came up to you and said, hey, you know, can you teach me how to trade? You might say, okay. And you would start them with the most basic thing. And you would want to build the good habits so you didn't have to unwire and unpick all the bad habits they might pick out. So we're doing this one simple rule. Take 10 trades without question. You want to trade exactly that rule. Don't take anything else into account. Just bang, get a signal, take the trigger. Uh, done. All right. I think you've got that one. Next one is limit orders only drill. So uh, you know what? Actually, there's a, there's a, I think of a couple of traders actually who have done this and they uh, have stuck with it. They've stuck with it because they find it more effective than using market orders, which tend to be quite emotional. Not always, of course, but it can be emotional. So this is to combat over trading and overthinking, right? And you, you're really you're anticipating not reacting. So we're playing chess, right? We want to know where the market's you know, when we look at the market, the trap to fall into is what's the easy trade? So look at the NASDAQ now. It's done that reversal. What's the easy trade? Oh, is it, is it a breakdown to lows? Is it, is it this? Is it a pullback? You know, you, you default to that. But the real edge comes in with taking a step back and thinking, hmm, OK, what if it dipped through the low and then pulled back up here? What if it went to the high double top tier, did this? You know, you start to think a little bit further ahead. So you're anticipating that and deciding whether to position for that or not. So then you could put your limit orders in. So rather than you looking at the market now and going, oh, uh, it's pulled back to a level of resistance, uh, I'm going to go long. You go, okay, think about this, think about this. Do I still want to be long? Okay, would I want to be long here? Would I want to be long a little bit lower? Maybe I'd want to be long a little dip under the prior low for a pop back up. Maybe you start to think a little bit further ahead and start to imagine the chart pattern in your mind, and then you can put the limit order in. And this stops you just impulsively trading you're executing with limits you're entering with the limits you're exiting with limits 10 trades and you're just doing that you're just trying to stick to this methodical process of not letting your emotions dictate your trades you're allowing your brain and your skill and your experience that you have and you know you have and the knowledge that you know you have to actually work for you. You're not being hijacked by emotion and panic and fear. I'm going to miss it. I need to get short. I need to get long. I'm going to miss this. Oh, the candle's moving now. I should have got long. I'm going to get, in a, you know, you're thinking a little bit more strategically. And yes, you can still trade on the lower time frames. Absolutely. If that's your edge, do that. But you're saying to yourself, hey, I'm going to think ahead of the game. If the price goes here, the price goes here. Do I want to position? How do I position? You're planning those trades with good structure. And the one thing, no meddling or tinkering, and that, what I mean by that is once the trade is in, the limit order's in, you leave it. And this is just to, to get you, again, to calm things down, to not over-trade, to not overthink. And why would it combat over-trading, you might say, might ask? Well, because if you're thinking strategically and saying the level you want to get involved in, whether it's a, a, you know, a limit order, a stop entry order as it breaks through a high, or a limit order to sell, whatever it is, you're... You're not trading constantly based on on the market. The market's not dictating to you when to trade. This is I wanted to listen. I wanted to hear this because I think this is something that's very important. It's been very useful for me, and I know it's been useful for others. The market should not drive your trading decisions. And that sounds like that sounds actually crazy. But what I mean by that is, you should dictate when you get involved and get involved with the market. When you get involved with a trade, should I say? You dictate the level. You dictate the price action. You dictate all the parameters that you want before you allocate hard-earned risk capital in the market. So the market has to do what you want it to do before you will execute. There's a subtle difference in thinking that way than saying, oh, I'm going to react. Oh, the market's moving up. I'll get long. Oh, the market's moving lower. I need to buy this. But whatever it may be, there's a subtle distinction in that you're in control and yes, the market will do what it wants and we can't control the market. Of course not. But you are in charge of when you allocate risk capital. You're not just going to jump when the market spikes. You're not going to do something when the market does something. You say, no, 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 these are my ideas. And if the market does X, Y, Z, then I'm going to execute. I'm going to allocate some risk capital. So something to consider. So limit orders only. I think that's a good drill. You can't amend the orders once they're in. You put the limit in. You have to take profit. You stop. And, and that's it. It's a very structured, easy to execute trade helps you slow things down, plan ahead. And once you commit, 
you stick to the plan. You stick to the plan. It's amazing to me. And I went on a bit of a rant in the last mastermind call, actually. And the, the members still remind me of it. I went on a bit of a rant. It's amazing to me how many traders who, you know, you maybe got six months, one year, two, three, four years in the market, and you haven't got a plan that you can stick to. If you just work on that, that is going to help you move forward. All the advanced stuff of adding to trades and we're going to do this opening range break, we're doing this and blah, blah, blah. All these, it's all nice, lovely, and it's great. But until you can get the basics nailed down, we have a very simple plan. Again, we're not worried about PL. Get the burden of PL off your shoulders. At the moment, we're worried about being able to stick to a very simple plan and slow things down, plan ahead, make a strategy, conduct yourself in alignment with that strategy. Okay, so <laughs> this is a controversial one, I know, and I got, I got a little like grief from this so many times before, but again, open minded, right? And I just see the imagine the headline I've got this. Oh, Mark says tries to lose money drill. Stick with me on this. Stick with me on this. Okay. The purpose of the try to lose money drill is this: is that it forces you to think differently to how you do now. Because you're trying, if you're struggling as a trader, and your objective is to make money, of course it is, right? Of course it is. This is why it's, this is this is why it's so confusing. And this and the confusion you feel and the kickback you're hit, hit feeling right now and the swear words you're probably shouting at the screen and the idiot things you're calling me, probably saying this is ridiculous, is why this is valuable because it's changing the way you think about trading. And if we can abruptly change things, we can rewire the brain to the trader you want to be. You're trying to find out what you think your worst trades. And the chimp, we'll talk about chimp, chimp paradox that comes from that little voice, the, the inner voice that's kind of negative. Rah, 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 take your trade off. You know, don't lose that unrealized PL and move your stop. And you need to trade this because moving and what sort of trader are you? You're sitting on your hands. You shouldn't be sitting, all that, you know, all that self talk. We know this has gone all this time and time again. But it's like, whoa, you want to lose money? That's, what? That's really weird. Again, demo. I want to make sure you do a demo. But it's probably not something you've done before. And if you think to yourself, and again, think, imagine, right? Where can I lose the most money? So just think for a second. What what trade, if I said to you, right, you have to lose money on the next trade, you have to lose money on the next trade, or I've got to hypothetically chop your leg off. <laughs> you know, I've got to chop your leg off. I get in trouble with saying stupid things like this, but hypothetically, right, you've got to lose money. What would you do? You can't just trade the spread. You can't just use a commission or whatever it may be. You've got to do a trade that's going to lose you money. Okay, so you might have one that springs to mind. You may be like, uh, after a prolonged trend, I will, and it's extended and it's got high volume, I'll look to buy a big five minute candle or whatever it may be, right? I don't know, what, what are you thinking? And so if your objective is to lose money, you're, you're, you're framing your thought pattern differently. And in that one week, your goal is to lose as much as possible. Again, I'm putting it here in red, trade or demo, but, you're trying to pick the trades that have got the least chance of success, trades you can lose the most in the shortest amount of time. And that's weird, right? You're like, that's weird. No one's ever thought about, told me to do that or asked me to do that. But you're, the thing is you're changing your perspective, right? You alter the way you look at things and you start to reveal what is the true challenge. This is the key thing. This is the key thing. You start to reveal what is the true challenge that you need to overcome, right? What what do I mean by that? If you can't lose money when you're determined to do so, and you can't win you're determined to do so, so in other words, right now, let's say you're struggling and things aren't working as you quite like them, you're not quite there yet, and you, you're determined and you're putting all the effort in and you're coming to these webinars and you're, you're putting the work in and you're doing the pre-market prep and, blah, 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 and you're still struggling. But then if you try to lose money as well and you're still struggling, then the issue is a mental one. But if you do this drill and you do lose money, then it's a strategy issue, right? Because if you go in and say, well, I'm going to buy highs, I'm going to try and you know, get by the top because I want to lose money, that's my objective in this drill, and you do it and it works, then you can go, actually, you know what? My strategy sucks because I've got it, I've got it twisted up in my head. And, I, and, and actually, I should be flipped the way I think about things because if I'm trying to win money I'm, and I don't and I don't make any money and I lose money, and I'm trying to lose money, but I can do. Hang on a second, I need to flip things, and maybe I do need to 
kind of look about how uh, flipping my strategy. But most likely it's going to be this. It's a mental issue of, hey, if I can't lose money when you're determined to do so, and you can't win when you're determined to do so, then the issue becomes mental. And you go, right, I don't need to meddle with strategy anymore. It's something to do with how I'm executing, number one. More likely, though, it's how you're running winners or cutting losers. No, this is kind of trading 101, and it's the first page of any bloody trading textbook out there. But maybe it is. And what you're doing now is you're looking at the data you've got when you said, I've tried to lose money, and I won. Try to win money and lost. And you'll feel pretty crap, right? You will feel pretty crap. But the point is here, we're finding answers. And so what you do is you go, okay, so what are the themes? Look at this. When I'm trying to lose money, I snatch at my losses because I want to lose. And when I try and make money, I snatch at my – and when I'm losing – and it, you see actually, actually the habit of the holding the winner or the loser, I'm over confused, but you get the point. It's the habit, the mental habit that is – the, the challenge, not the strategy. Now, if, you're, if you do this and you're successful at losing, it's an easy fix. You just flip that on its head. You go, right, I was buying at highs. I was working. I'm just going to sell at high. I'm going to do exactly the opposite. And there we go. I've got a winning strategy. Keep my mental aspect the same. I've got a winning strategy. I went through a few slides but um, ahead of myself. But some example rules, right? Five trades a day. Your max win on the day is, say, 3R. You stop for the day if you manage to lose 10R. Don't forget, you're trying to lose 10R, right? I don't think you will because most people, the challenge is mental. It's not a strategy issue. But if it is, great. You said you fixed it. You fixed your trading. But if you can't lose, then you look at the two and go, well, what is the commonality here? Because even if I try to, it's not, it's this shift in mindset. All right, let's move on to another one. Okay. Um, I don't you think about that losing one, right? You give them feedback in the questions and answers. You might be like, this is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. I'm going to listen to you again. You're an absolute clown. Don't be talking about But open-minded, honestly, open-minded. And what have you got to lose? You're going to do a demo. You've got nothing to lose. Um, you might learn something from it. And I think this is, before I go on, I think this is the issue, the, the, the way to move forward and gain clarity in your trading is to sometimes just sit and reflect and work on one thing and go, hey, that one thing really needs to be fixed. I really need to fix that. You know, so let me let me just dig into it as much as I possibly can and solve the problem and get the data and analyze it and look at all the trades and see. And then you go, right, let me twist this one little dial and try and fix that. How that works. Let me twist another little dial and try to fix that as opposed to the majority of traders out there who have got this massive control panel of dials of position size of market of strategy of running trades of adding to trades and they're adjusting and dialing all these dials at once and you don't know what the combination is because you're changing all the dials you don't know what's moving you forward and what's not whereas when you focus on one at a time you're like okay that worked that uh, didn't work i'll try that it's a much more methodical process all right so drill four forced into a trade drill i like this one this is a good one. It works well. It absolutely works well to make you, again, remove the overthinking from your trading. Overthinking adds pressure. So choose a direction. You can choose it. Um, but you must enter the market and use a two-to-one risk order ratio. So it's this is just a – you are forced into taking a trade. So if you're a day trader, first 50-minute bar, say, and whatever your market you're trading or a specific time, you must make a trade. Your choice, long or short. You, that's all you've got to do. You've got 10 seconds to choose. You're, you're geared. You're ready. You've got a two-to-one risk order ratio, let's say, I don't know, 40 pips, 80 pips, 50, 100, whatever market you're trading, make it you know, a, a appropriate for the market you're trading. And after the 15 minute, a little bell goes off, ding. You've got to choose. You've got 10 seconds to choose, long or short. And the point of this is you'll do it for 10 trades because you're forced into pulling the trigger and not overthinking because the objective is just to execute. It's not to be clever. It's not to be smart. It's not to wait. It's just to execute. And you do this for 10 trades. You're forced into making a decision. And this used to be something that I heard used to happen a lot in some of the prop firms in London. I never traded prop. I actually, this is probably a separate story, but... I went down and had a chat with a prop firm, and I thought I was a way better trader than I was, and I ended up not taking the deal. But I made that a story for another time. But anyway, I do know people that trade prop, and this is the kind of thing they would do, right? And they would say, hey, listen, you're forced into a trade. You've got to now manage that trade. You've got to kind of just do something, make a decision. You're forced into making a decision. You're committed to entering the trade. It puts you under pressure. 
but it takes away the burden of being right because you're forced to take a trade, right? You don't, you like, okay, I don't want to take the trade. You're forced into it. it. It's a forced thing you have to do and take the trade. Okay, so um, next one is is the is the hedge drill, right? And the hedge drill is, I know traders who again use this because it hacks the brain a little bit. It's, it hacks the brain because when you're in a trade, let me put a little bit of back context to this. You know, you think about trades as entry and exit, right? Entry and exit, and you're always thinking about get a better entry, run my trades, all this stuff and stuff. This one kind of flips that on its head a little bit. And it reframes the entry process into an exit. What do I mean? So at the open, you place the hedged order. So the opening of the market, you place the hedged order. So let's say you went long, uh, NASDAQ short, NASDAQ at the same time, and Pepperstone do support this. Then when you're ready to take a trade, you peel off one side and position yourself into the trade. So you basically, because you've got this hedge position, you're like, that's stupid because I've actually, my net is zero. But actually you feel like you've got something on. So let's say you, example before JP spoke today, and then as that you took a long or a short, right? The market then rallied up and up and up, and you were then okay. Well, which one do you want to peel off? And maybe you're like, okay, we, we've 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 taken the high, we've got a lower high here. I'm going to peel off the long and leave myself net short. It changes the way you you think about things because really all you're doing is taking one side off. Of course, you're then exposed to the short side. What you're doing is you're taking one side off. It changes the way you frame the market in the trade, right? You feel as if you're already in and the decision is more of a considered one. Try this one. Try this one. You put long and short on the market you like to trade. And then you, it, it, some re, I don't know why this works, but it just makes you feel like you're in the position, even though you're, you're neutral and you're kind of more considered about when you peel off one and leave yourself exposed. So if you wanted to get long, you'd obviously you close the short and that would leave you net long. And then when to close that long, you put the short back on. So you're constantly got this hedge on. Um, and I, I knew a trader probably 10 years, I might still speak to him now and then occasionally. And he would trade like this all the time, all the time. And I would be like, what are you doing, Chris? Man, what are you trading like this? He'd be like, it just helps me. It just helps me. He says, you know, I'll, I'll see that I'm up, you know, 10 grand on this and I'm, I'm down 10 grand and I'll, I'll see it there in an unrealized blotter. And for some reason, I, 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 I kind of look at it differently and I take one off and I put this back on. I'm like, yeah, but why, why are you doing that? It just reframes the way I think about it. I was like, okay, that's a pretty clever hack. That's a pretty clever hack. If it works for you, then you do it, right? It's just none of this stuff. When you, when you do well in trading at the end of the year, when you go to the bank manager and he says, he says oh, did you make this with, with hedge trades or normal trades? No one cares, right? No one cares. So think about this one. Um, and again, going back to the first slide, you know, think about the concept behind it and what resonates with you and why you do it and what your challenges you're trying to overcome in trading. If you're you know, over trading, overthinking, maybe this is the right thing for you. If you're you're struggling to to run a winner or you're struggling to find a sweet spot or whatever it is, then maybe it's worth worth trying. Um and the last one I've got for you is kind of a bit of a bonus one. And, and I got a trader I got a trader doing this. We're doing some one to one work one to one work together. And I said, listen, I want you to toss a coin at the open or another fixed time, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 10 p.m., whatever it may be, you toss a coin, right? Head you go long, tail you go short, risk reward ratio two to one. 50 point stop, hundred point target. This is to overcome that perfect trade-itis again. So if you're constantly trying to get the right trade or you're over-trading, this is good for that as well, you're basically, again, lifting off the, the, the desire to be right because you're tossing a coin. How stupid is it? It is stupid, right? It's stupid. But you're getting rid of the need to make a trade and the identity you've got of staking your value on the next trade and all that kind of stuff. You're getting rid of it. You're getting rid of it. And you're saying, I'm tossing a stupid coin and I'm making my trade decision on a stupid coin. That is crazy. But that's the point because you want to get moving. Toss the coin, pull the trigger. Toss the coin, pull the trigger. Toss the coin, pull the trigger. Take those trades, 10 in a row, boof, boof, every day. Dung, 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 dung. Two to one risk-reward ratio, not overthinking things, 100-point target, 50-point stop, whatever you want. Predefine it. And all you're doing is you're just taking the trade when you see your signal. And what this does, guys, what this does is it starts to blend and, and mold your mind into thinking that each individual trade does not matter. Because it doesn't matter. It's a collection of trades that they give you the results you want, not one individual trade. And so when you do this, you're like, ding, 
ding, ding, ding, ding, ding, ding, heads. All right, long, bong. And you're like, I feel stupid doing this, but what you're doing is you're trading and executing when you see the signal. You're not hesitating, you're not overthinking it, because you don't need to overthink it because the rules are very simple. It's the heads that go long, I put a 50 point stop in, 100 point target. Oh, great, go on target, all oh, got stops. And, and the point of this is, is it, just to show you as well the random nature of the market to a certain extent, this is complete random zero edge strategy, and you'll see different results, right? And, and, and also, I want to, you to think, if you decide to do this one, just listen to yourself talk, right? Because this is revealing. Because when you're in a trade and you've tossed a coin to get in, so you've got just zero skill. I think we agreed on that. Zero skill. It's a coin. The skill of tossing the coin is what you've done, right? Bing, there it goes. You've taken the trade. Now just observe your self talk in the trade. Market's going up. You're long. Oh, oh, 70 points, 80 points. Oh, should I take it here? What the? You're trading on a coin toss. Your mind is now programmed to be scared about losing that unrealized PL or a trade that was just a random trade. And then you can have the self talk and go, what are you thinking? The objective is just sits the 100 point target. It's, it, it's, it's, it's just a coin toss drill. And you start to then un, unpack all that negativity, protecting the negativity, but the, the, um, the undesirable thoughts and emotions you have during a trade, you start to unpack that and you start to say, hey, why am I even thinking like this? Why am I frustrated about having three days losing in a row? It's a coin toss. And you start to see how emotionally attached you are to the re short-term results. And then you can start to unpick it slowly and go, hey, and then, and then you can look yourself in the mirror and go, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why would I be emotional about something that's a bloody coin toss drill? It's the most stupid thing in the world. It's got no meaning. I shouldn't have staked my identity on it, but I'm frustrated. Why the hell am I frustrated? And then you can start to put things in perspective and go, hey, well, when I remove all these drills, when I execute from a place that I think is the right place to trade and I execute with, 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 with clarity and with what I believe is edge, you know, then I just can, again, discard the meaning behind each individual trade. I don't stick my identity on the, on the on the outcome of each individual trade. I can put things into perspective. I don't have to worry about the next trade. I can focus on just doing what I said I'm going to do, sticking to my trading plan and just going with the flow. And like I say, I've said this many times to so another, another trader I work with, just shrug your shoulders. That doesn't mean be lazy and not do your prep and not do all the things and stick to your risk management. But it's like, hey, the trade's on. Trade will do what it wants, the market will do what it wants to do. Hit my target on your own, like you should do in the coin toss drill, because it should have no meaning. And when you can get to that point where you have the confidence to execute your trading plan, hopefully the point is you do these drills, then you come up with your trading plan, you stick to your plan, and you have the same relaxed, confident approach to it as you were doing with these drills. And the point is then you go, okay, I don't need to overthink it. I just need to execute the plan. If the plan seems sound. I execute it. Let's not worry about what the market's doing so much. So definitely worth considering. So the, the summary for you guys is this. The objective of all these drills is to fix a specific challenge in your trading. Let's not get let's get back to the, the reason why we're doing this. We're not doing it for fun. We're not doing it because it's exciting. We're doing it to fix a challenge to get you to the next level, the next station, because many traders have suffered from this situation and issue of you have all the knowledge, you know the strategies, you know what you should be doing, you know what you shouldn't be doing, but you're not doing it. And it's simple. You're like, I'm, I'm not doing it. So let's get you doing it. Let's get all the stuff that you know you should be doing, get you doing it day to day. And sometimes just patching over and trying to do this and making a patch and making this and making that to make it work is not enough. Sometimes you've got to go, right, shoom, sweep it all clean. Let me just start again. Dunk, 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 coin toss drill. Dunk, 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 so one simple rule drill. Limit orders only drill. Let me run through them. Let me hardwire the habits that I want because I know I've got the knowledge. I know I've got the skills there. And you're focusing on one thing that's not working for you. And again, going back a few slides, the objective, the, the benefit of this is you don't have any distractions. You're not trying to pick the right market to be in. You're not trying to pick the right trade or strategy or entry or whatever. The burden of that's gone. It's like, all I've got to do is this drill. I've got to pass this ball back and forth, back and forth. I don't have to worry about tackle or, or scoring a goal. I just have to do this because I'm building this skill up. And it's total commitment to overcoming a hurdle in your trading that you know is the one thing holding you back. There's one thing every trader's got. 
And that doesn't matter whether you're year one or year 100, maybe 101, 101 year old trader. There was out there. About year one or year 31, say. There's always something that's a little bit, and of course, year 31, you'd think that there's a lot of things been solved and there's something holding someone back from taking it to the next level, the next level, the next level. But if you're in year one, there's something holding you back and you know what it is or, or some things, but the big thing, and it's overcoming that one hurdle. You know, and I think that's a theme that I, I really hope that you guys get, you know, it's, it's just if you can just focus on the on, on one thing at a time and you know, remove that thought of P&L and, you know, forget about all these people posting all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. Just focus on you. Just focus on you and you know and sit down and, and, and take it seriously enough. And I know that you do because you're on here. You wouldn't be only listening to me if you didn't take this seriously. So I know you're serious about your trading. I know you're ambitious about your trading. I know you want to move forward. And so every little thing that I, you know, I think that I've found that's worked for others, has worked for me, I've presented it to you. You can discard what you don't like, but maybe pick what does you do like and go, okay, I am going to try that. I am going to just train and do that training and those drills for 10, 10 trades and see what I think about it and see how I go with it. You know, I think it's it's, it's worth exploring. Um, I wanted to mention, guys, great feedback. I'm just I'm switching lanes in, changing gears. Uh, last week, no, two weeks ago, was it? Uh, I did the opening range breakout um, webinar. Uh, decent strategy again one for just just executing methodically um i i, I mentioned it but I, I a few people have kind of emailed and, and said how do i get hold of this i had this coded up which is an opening range breakout engine it's basically a strategy back tester if you like i worked with a developer on this multiple times uh, we went back and forth multiple times just say multiple versions and i gave you a copy of this and i think so some people forgot the link but it's tradersmastermind.com forward slash orb um, and I've flipped gears a little bit here, but I wanted to mention that again. And if you've got no context on this, then I think there's a copy of this available to you if you want to uh, watch this. But I wanted to remind you of that because I got some great feedback. And by the way, thank you very much. I do appreciate uh, your kind words. And yes, it is a good tool. And yes, it took me a fair bit of time to, to kind of work with this guy, but I'm giving it to you um, uh, for no charge. You know, it's absolutely no charge. You're very welcome to it. Uh, I think I've got a, a limit of 100. I think we're pretty close to it, but um, it's there for you. Uh, and please enjoy it uh, if you like to trade that type of thing. And if you use trading, you can trade some other for slash O R B. Okay. I think that was um, enjoyable. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's have your questions if you have some, uh, please, ladies and gents. You have a question section. Um, all right. There's a few coming in. There's a few coming in. I will hang around and answer these. And if you would like to type them in, you can do. And uh, we've got a full reversal on the NASDAQ. Uh, of course. Okay. Who have we got here? Uh, Abdul Azad. Good evening, Abdul. I'm a complete beginner. I don't know where to start from and how to buy and sell. How much should I try with? Oh, that is a really beginner question, Abdul. And this probably is, uh, this webinar is probably um too advanced for you and i don't say that a patronizing way at all um absolutely not and the beginners are very welcome on here but this probably means a lot to you because it, this is probably for people who have experience and understand the emotions that come into it um if you go on you know if you go on the pepperstone website there's lots of kind of a uh, content in there of how to place a trade and how to do the very very basic stuff this stuff is the next level i think um i would if, if I'm giving you a really quick answer, I'd say, right, go on the Pepperstone website, have a look. There's loads of free content out there as well on YouTube, um, just basic stuff. You don't need to be paying for any of this basic stuff. You can get up to speed, get a demo account open, Pepperstone, Spreadbet, CFD, whatever jurisdiction you're in, and play around with demo money. Just play around, just get used to it, um, and then come up with a strategy, come up with a plan, and you're on the next level. But I could be here for ages talking through Abdul, but that would be my recommendation uh for you okay um thank you miss janine says uh justine upton says why may you not do a market order instead of a limit now um I, I don't, you know if you're if you are executing uh, a strategy that requires a market order absolutely right i don't think there's a problem with that but the reason that i suggest it with this drill is that many traders there are some stats that 90 something percent 90 something percent of orders are, are market orders right but then we look at the stats and a lot of traders are struggling i think that market orders encourage you to trade 
aggressively. They encourage you to trade emotionally and reactively, whereas a limit order encourages you to trade a little bit more thoughtfully. You want to play chess, not checkers or drafts if you're in the UK. You want to think clearly and go, okay, if the market dips down to this level, I will buy it. Or if it just breaks above that high and fails, I'll sell it. And so you're thinking, and you might, and, you, and the and the, um, the pushback you'll get in the mind is, well, I'm going to miss trades. I don't want to get involved. I'm going to miss stuff. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you and, and may do, but if you're over trading, if you're impulsively trading, this just puts the brakes on, pump the brakes a little bit, adds a little bit of circuit breaker in. You find yourself impulsively taking deals that you don't want and trades that aren't quite within your strategy allocation. Then maybe a limit order just, oh, whoa, easy, 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 easy. Where do I really want to buy this? And just gives you time. You put the limit in and maybe you don't want it. Maybe you cancel the limit. So just it just puts the just puts the brakes on things a little bit. Um, is that it? I think that's oh no, some more here. Apologies. There's a there is, there is a scroll button on this side. Uh there we are. We have Roe Ashton. He is here, or uh, is it male or female? I do apologize. I'm not gonna make assumptions anyway. <laughs> Let's go into that. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's good to hear from you. You're always asking questions. Appreciate you. Great information. Go and try the coin drill. Do it. Yes, do it. Let me know how you get on. I would really love to hear how you got on with this. If you were, talk if you were talking about emotions because you cut trades in the middle, I'm wondering what your thoughts are about RR ratio because when I do three to one, I'm feeling like I cut two to one, feeling like reverse. Okay. Um, ha, yes. Well, do you know what? There's two things to attack here. There's two things to attack. The first one, is to say, hey, is your three to one too ambitious for the conditions? Is the strategy ineffective? Are you, are you asking for too much? You got a 50 point stop, you're trying to find 150 points on a kind of intraday move, is that too much? In which case it's it's an operational thing. And maybe, maybe the reason you're cutting things at two to one is because you don't really believe you'll get three to one. In which case, listen to that. But you don't know this until you stick to the plan for a bit. Again, I'm going back. And I'm, going, I'm, you know, I'm going back to the kind of same old thing, and I feel like it's like a broken record sometimes. But why don't you stick to the rules of your three to one risk reward ratio for ten trades, twenty trades, thirty trades? Don't know how frequent you trade, and see that what the results are. Because now you'll see, and admittedly it's a small sample size, but what you'll see is, do trades go often go two to one and come back and stop you out? Or do they do go three to one eventually? You're just cutting them short. You don't know until you have that data where you've stuck to the three to one and you've seen and gone, hey, you know, most of them go two and a half, two and a half, 2.2, 1.8. .2, three to one's way too much. Or you might be pleasantly surprised and go, actually, it's just that initial rotation goes two, it pauses, and then the type of trade I get, it requires another leg. And so I, I think if you stick to the three to one, um, uh, you've had some more context here. I'm day trader one to three trades now you just stick to your three to one and just see you know and just and fight the urge for now and say hey like like a drill like a drill right i'm doing this as a drill to stick to my trade stick to my one simple rule of three to one risk reward ratio and not meddle with the trade now trade might come back you might want to urge to trade you might want to close it all this urge to close it all this type of stuff but you're not going to get any any data until you've actually done it and stuck with it because you don't know if it's a strategy thing and really you should be looking at two and a half or two to one or should I be tightening the stop? Or should I be, be being a better, 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 better with my entry? You don't know that um, if you're overruling your plan all the time. So I definitely would recommend sticking to the plan. Um, uh, more context, Roe's put. Uh, by the way, thanks to you until look at the microphone here on the other screen and everything. To, uh, it's a very, very small window for me. I don't know why that is. Maybe I can pop it out. Uh, by the way, thanks to you for my fear of putting the trigger. I kept working on it. Thank you. Good, good. I'm pleased. You've worked on that one specific thing and you are a man i thought you were <laughs> um paul king says i've been trading for a couple of months with trend signal use the daily uh time frame sniper and accelerator strategy not seeing consistent results better follow your own strategy without using indicators um paul i i think there's many ways to follow the path and trading and i know people who are very successful who do use indicators um what i tend to see is the people who use start with a lot of indicators and peel them off and then maybe put a couple back on but it's all, almost always this cycle indicators 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 getting the signals then the charts go naked and it's poor price and you start to see just price for what it is maybe price and volume maybe price volume on one other indicator and then you kind of maybe put one indicator on to help you with a specific strategy or many people don't and leave it completely naked uh, or, or they're very selective about the indicators they use so you know, you're on your own journey, Paul. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to kind of 
um, tell you what to do, but I would suggest um, if you're not seeing the results, and again, you know, it's up to you, obviously, then re recommending stuff without knowing more about your background and what's going on, but I would definitely consider going naked on your charts and just looking at the charts and just reading pure price action. And I might be a bit biased because that's what works for me, but um, I, I feel that that gives you a better concept and understanding of how price is moving the ebbs and the flows the rotations how does it behave at highs how does it behave at lows what momentum ignition looks like what exhaustion looks like um what size of the candle indicates um how the relationship with with, with the prior days range all this kind of stuff you sort of see that through a different lens when you just have price on there rather than looking at it in relation to an indicator which it can be useful you know i'm not a complete anti-indicator person um, but I think that they can cloud your judgment a little bit, especially if you're going through the learning phase, um, which you are. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um, Martina Cal says, hey, how do, I let my, how do I let my winners run? I find myself exiting the market, just a few pips, then it rallies that side. It's discipline. It's discipline, right? Um, but I say that, but let me add this context and bear with me while I take a sip of water. I want to add this context. It is discipline. However, if you if you if you leave the decision up to you on the fly, i.e., what I mean by that is if you leave the decision up to you in the moment of the trade, you'll never make the right decision. So plan the trade before you take the trade. And and what I would do is say, okay, is this day likely to be a trend extension day? Is it likely to hit those further targets? Are we in kind of a big oscillation day? Today might be a good example. Be, oh, yeah, Jay Powell's you know, said something and it's moving, it's volatility. Yeah, maybe I'll look for those extended targets. Or maybe you go into a day like yesterday, it was very, very quiet and calm, nothing going on, and go, hey, extended targets aren't really the type of day. So decide before the trade and say, yes, I am going to hold my trade until the final target. That's it. I'm not going to be seduced by the unrealized PL. I'm just going to stick to that. And then maybe then this day you go, hey, actually, you know what? Um, I'm going to cut the trades a little bit shorter. I'm not going to look to run them. And so it's sitting on your hands. And, you know, if if you know, one thing, uh, you know, we've got a Peter in, in who does the Trades Mastermind call on, on Tuesdays, um, very experienced trader, swing trading FX. He, you know, one thing he did many years ago, how long he's been trading, decade plus, whatever it is, he would take his dog for a walk so he didn't meddle with the trade. Put the trade in, put your limit in, put your stop in, and leave the damn thing alone. And he would say, and he was quite adamant, hey, I went and took my dog for a walk. And so maybe you don't have a dog, but maybe just getting away from the screen and, and, and eliminating that 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 emotional impact. Make life easy for yourself. You've decided on the trade, you've given yourself a target for the trade, you've got to stop the trade, stick to the trade. You know, I always have the analogy of if you're trying to lose, you know, trying to lose body fat, for example. I don't make like life hard for yourself by sitting in front of a real lovely chocolate cake and staring at it. <laughs> why why make life hard for yourself just don't have blade chocolate cake in the house right so very similar with trading if you're trying to hold your trade don't watch every tick going all up down up yeah yeah or up that you don't, don't don't do that to yourself you decide you're going to hold the trade and leave it and have your limit in let it take it out and just just and then that might not be the trade you end up becoming but it's the trader that you know then recognizes the value of holding the trade right until uh the final thing okay a few more questions here um uh d -d 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 nigel hello nigel i don't have a question as such mark but i've been following you for some time thank you nigel and sometimes suffer from fear f-o-j-i fear of joining in okay even though the trade idea was good these drills are really interesting and i think we'll be giving them a go thanks thanks for your feedback nigel fear of joining in okay yeah try those drills because especially the coin toss or the one simple rule just think think no fear because why, what have you got to fear? It's a coin. It's a coin or it's, a, it's just one simple rule. I'm just executing. And this is the point of the drills is just to try to get to the root of why you think the way you do. And the most importantly, again, I'm repeating myself, but just taking the burden of having to perform off your shoulders. Because it's a big burden, right? We want to perform every day, especially day traders. So if you remove that, it's like all I've got to do is click the bloody button, which is really actually all you've got to do anyway. Then that doesn't reframe things. Uh, so thank you, Nigel. Okay. Uh, a few more here. David, fear of retracements is my biggest problem. Like now I shorted US 500 at my FIB level. I'm not seeing profit. My target is well below where we are, but I never know where to 
take profit and retrade the retracement or just stomach the drawdown. Ah, you know, that's a tough one, David, because it depends. I think, ah, uh, yeah, that's quite a long answer. I don't want to, you know, go into this massive amount and take up everyone's time, but it's a great question. Um, and I got some thoughts on it, but let me just try and be succinct if I can. I think you have to decide on, on stake your flag in the ground or the other. Am I going to look for that further move lower that I expect this market to close at the lows, in which case I'll sit through any retracement I need to, right? I've got the stop in, fine. Maybe you drag it down a little bit and you kind of cover a bit of risk and you, you, you kind of put it, protect the deal a little bit, but you have to commit one way or the other. When you sit and you're kind of half on the fence and you go, oh, yeah, you got to commit to saying, hey, I think it's going to close at lows or I think it's going to hit whatever the whatever the price target you've got and commit to that. Or you go, hey, I'm trading this initial this initial pulse. I'm a trading I'm trading this initial move and the signs that I'm gonna use to indicate that maybe the move is over is a double bottom or it's a flush lower or it's whatever. And so you decide one or the other. Again, I think the same with a lot of things in trading. If you sit in the middle, you never make the right decision. You're constantly flip-flopping. And more importantly, you're constantly having that internal dialogue in your mind. I'm going to lose the money. I'm going to do this. Da, da, da. You just commit to one. Write down your thoughts on why you committed to that one. Let's say, for example, hey, I think it's going to close at lows today. Blah, blah, blah. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at least you, you know, you've made the decision. You've got enough information to make the decision at the time. Bang. Stick to the decision. Um, all right, I've got time for a couple more, guys. Can you explain the hedging again, please, how I might pull profit from it? Uh, yeah, Fadi, basically the hedging is you put a long and short on at the same time. Sounds odd, but you you know, you know, have two positions. You're net neutral, you're long and short, but you see the in your blotter, like it goes up and you're losing 150 bucks and you're gaining 150 bucks. You're, net, you're not making a difference to your trade. What you're doing is instead of entering the trade, you're taking a trade off. That makes sense. So it's, a, it's a subtle difference of how you frame it in your mind. Um, it's not for everyone this, but it's something that it might make if you struggle with the entry and you think it's such a big deal of the entry, then maybe just taking it, making a trade off, closing one path of the trade um, makes you frame things slightly differently. Um, uh, Linus says, do you think looking for higher risk reward ratio is a good idea? It depends on the on the on the conditions, Linus. It does depend on the conditions. Um, I think generally you should always have in your trading arsenal a strategy that allows you for a good high risk reward ratio, but that's not all the time, right? I think I can I couldn't sit here and tell you, oh, every day you've got 10 to ones. It just don't happen. Some days you've got to hit those singles. It's like playing cricket, right? You're playing cricket. Sometimes you've got to hit a single. Sometimes you've got to take a double. But every now and then there's a ball that just sits lovely and you can have a shot and crack it for six or crack it for a four. And it's the same with trading. You know, sometimes there's a trade set up and you go, hey, that's a really nice high type flag. There's some catalyst there, da, la, 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 whatever your, your, your filters are. I can take it with a reasonable tight risk and there's a good chance it breaks the Friday's high, which is 60 pips above me. And I've got a 10 pip risk. I'm making these numbers up. Yeah, that's decent. Yeah, I'll go for that. But there's other times when you go, oh, it's a 50 point, 50 point risk target. Really, I'm looking for maybe 100 points if I'm lucky on this, two to one. Yeah, but it's got a good probability of working. I'll take that. So I think generally speaking, Yes, but it does depend on the conditions. And don't always try and force that big risk reward ratio because sometimes it's unnatural for the conditions. The market's oscillating around the range. You're trying to look for these five to ones, three to one, 10 to, 10 to one even. You're going to be disappointed. And so it's just aligning with conditions. Um, okay. Uh, Paul King says, uh, good advice. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. A great webinar. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Peter Daniel says, hi. He's going to be jumping on his call in a moment. Uh, da, da, da. thank you, thank you, thank you. And oh, I missed this question. Thank you, plus tra trend lines. I think I was in reply to something else. Anyway, I think that's it. And we finished with one minute to spare. Thank you so much for your questions. I do appreciate your attention on a day when things are busy. I hope you found some value from it. We're back in a couple of weeks with another webinar. And if you uh, want access to recording, I believe you'll be sent a copy of this. Thank you for your time, ladies and gents. Much appreciated. I shall see you uh, either on Peter's, Peter's going to call in a moment, or I shall see you on Thursday if you're a Traders Mastermind member for the members call. Otherwise, we'll see you again for the next webinar. Take care. Good. Bye.